Well, hello once again, folks. Welcome back to the Square the Circle music channel. I'm your pal, Aaron Major. That's right. And uh, I'm here to talk about, you know what, you guessed it, circles and squares, collecting records, music appreciation, all that wonderful stuff. Kind of cold this evening here in Western Oregon, so please uh, excuse my <laughs> homely, the homely look. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't use my, my heat. I don't turn the heat on. Even in the summer, I don't use my air conditioner. Um, it never gets too damn hot and it never gets, honestly, it never really gets that cold. Um, we have cold snaps. They can get kind of ugly, but you know, put a fucking, put a sweatshirt on, pussy. <laughs> use a blanket. You know, same as in the summer, if you just like, you keep all the windows closed and the shades drawn after 10 a.m., like, you're golden. I don't know what the fuck people are all about, wasting all this energy. But whatever. Um, the whole point to this was, like, pardon my salty dog look, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty chilly this evening. So um, I want to talk about uh, that thing I do every week when I go to the junk stores and I get to meander through all the bins and check out all the shelves and see if I can find any gems to show you guys. And I call this episode Tales from the Thrift. <laughs> That's right. All of the cool shit I found throughout the week at the junk store. So let's take a look at it, shall we? I thought you might want to do that with me. So um, things are getting kind of, things are drying up a little bit in this part of Oregon here. Um, it's gotten to the point now where all of the the prominent big name, you know, charity shops, uh, they all charge like $4 each now for a record. It used to be like you could still find some places like a few St. Vincent de Paul's scattered on the outskirts of town. You could still find them for $1.99. Nope, not anymore. Everything's like back up to like insanely stupid prices where it's like, I'm not going to even bother going anymore. Uh, I think at one point I took a break from going to the junk stores like for a solid like six months because I was just so disillusioned with like shit being so picked over at first like you know there's just people everywhere buying up used stuff and uh, now they've all caught wind and these stores think they can get away with charging four dollars and five dollars for used <laughs> scratched up records like man it's getting tough. Slim Pickens over here in Eugene, Springfield, Oregon. So uh, I'll show my very modest uh, gathering of things that I got this week. Short and sweet episode tonight. Everyone's like, fuck, thank God. Just get to it already, buddy. God. Yeah, I like to yammer. That's what I do. Um, I'll show you my CDs first because I only got three of them. Uh, these are still a buck a piece, which is pretty rad. So I've been buying a lot of CDs lately um i don't know if they'll ever go get hiked up again but it's pretty easy to like sift through find the good hits and um check to see if they're clean and uh, a lot of shit's really really clean i've never had well i mean i've had this on cd i think maybe at some point in the distant distant past but really i've only ever had the tape the cassette tape that i had ever since i was a child um i've talked about her and how much i love her and you know i love a lot of like new age dork music so i found a sweet copy of watermark guys for a dollar now i have it on cd so now i can like you know take it with me to the coast and listen listen to this at the beach this is this is beach sitting music if you ever rent rent a house on the coast i don't know if where you're from you folks wherever in the world or the united states or wherever you may be um if you have an actual coastline um where it's like you know got some geological you know, <laughs> differences here and there. And you don't just come from a place in the world where it's just like, you know, 25 miles of a expanse of nothingness, of sand, you know, fuck that. That's not the ocean. You want to go to the coastline where there's like giant rocks and formations and cliff sides. And, you know, it's not a day at the beach if you can't like easily get killed. You know what I mean? That's the fun stuff. And you go and you rent a beach house for a hundred bucks a night and you take your Enya with you. And you sit there and you stare out at the salty expanse and the darkness and listen to this shit. It's fucking fantastic. 
Um, yeah, I love Enya. And this is her first, not her first album, but her first big smash. This was technically her second album, I think like 1987, I want to say. Um, Watermark. So really badass, like simplistic, um, haunting melodies on the piano and, you know, all that uh, inspirations from Celtic lore and, and uh, that part of the world. So pretty sweet. Found a copy of uh, a <laughs> look at me. <laughs> Look at me go. All this crazy feminine dorky shit I'm buying. I found a copy of the Immaculate. What's it called? The Immaculate Collection? Yeah, the Immaculate Collection by Madonna. Uh, it's all the all the big, big stuff. The, the big, big hits. You know, Holiday, Lucky Star, Like a Virgin, Material Girl. Uh, all the way up through like uh, kind of the later stuff. Vogue and uh, Like a Prayer, La Isla Bonita. You know, fuck yeah. Madonna's hot, whatever. <laughs> I've always found Madonna pretty pretty outrageous, pretty sexy, very talented. Uh, Dick Tracy, dude. Dick Tracy sold me. You guys remember that film? I was just a kid. I was like seventh grade. Another one of those moments in your past and you, when you're growing up and you're like, yeah, there's no doubt I am straight. <laughs> I am straight as an arrow. Watching Madonna on screen and Dick Tracy, I'm just like, boy, what a sexy gal. Whatever. Um... And what a sexy guy. I love the shit. I've been finding a bunch of this lately. I've been talking about it actually quite a bit lately, but I found a best of, best of Kitaro. Kitaro, the Japanese um, sensation of, you know, new age kind of electronic bombast, just really, you know, really aesthetic and, and cool and just over the top um, presentation of just kind of like he does. He plays the Japanese wood flute, but also plays just like, t you know, towers of synthesizers and taiko drums, and he has a bunch of other dancers and performers and an amazing light show and just fucking awesome. Kitaro's great. And here's a best of compilation that I found uh, with not a ton of music on it, but, you know, he's still magnificent. So you find shit like this for a dollar and yeah, lucky day. So that's what I found on CD. That's it. Just like three little ones. Didn't find a lot this week. Um, but here are some great cassette tapes that I found. Uh, about a half dozen here. Half dozen really great, great hits. Um, this one, actually, super excited about this one. Because uh, you folks have heard me talk about um, my distaste for Bob Dylan as an artist. Um, yeah. So if that's new to any of you guys who have been watchers on my channel, like... Sorry to shock you to death here, but I don't fucking like Bob Dylan. <laughs> and this happens to be a collection of his songs, but all performed by other artists, which is A-OK -okay with me. Um, so I'll check it all out. Dude, Johnny Cash is on here, Joan Baez. Um, who else? There's some really odd ones. I looked over, like Rod Stewart um, does one on here. Who else? Some crazy shit. Ricky Nelson. What? Oh, Rick Nelson. I don't know if this is <laughs> the same person. But yeah, should be cool. Um, so I'll check me out some Bobby D music, but performed by everyone else. <laughs> this would be cool. It's called, what's it called? I Shall Be Unreleased. <laughs> the songs of Bob Dylan on Rhino Records. Rhino put this out. So it must have been like the early, what does that say? It says 1973, but I don't think that's right. Whatever. That'll be fun. A fun listen. This one looked really cool, too. Um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's just a weird little indie press or, you know, a, a little indie tape from, I think I read uh, from Portland. Uh, but yeah, like mid-90s out of Portland, just this kind of like, I don't know if it's punk or whatever. I'm sure it's just kind of like alt-rock, interesting. I don't know. Looked cool. They're called The Need. They were called The, uh, the Need. And the album's called Resurrection. Yeah, some fucking cool, like, indie out of Portland. Uh, they released this in 1996, and <laughs> now it's mine. Uh, let's see. I was a junior in high school in uh, 1996, and I was doing the same thing. I was buying, you know, tapes from really cool, independent, like, alt-rock and punk-rock bands. And, uh, man, I'll never forget. I think the first, the first tape I ever bought at a rock show like a like a small town you know independent rock show with like a punk band and a few other bands uh this band that um formed in my high school they played this show um 
They were called Marigold. <laughs> but they were fucking great. Really great band. Um, but they played with another like punk band from my high school, like the Outclass or or something like that. Um, and then a band called the American Girls. And they were also like a Northwest sensation of, you know, alt rock, kind of like indie. They had horns in the band, you know that sound, you know what I mean? 1996 in Oregon, just <laughs> independent rock. But yeah, the American Girls, they were dope. And I bought their tape. Um, that was like the first tape I ever had. And I had Marigold's tape too. They were fucking awesome. But yeah, I'm excited to listen to that and see what it's all about. Um, again, here's some fucking Kitaro. Yeah, I love Kitaro. Um, but this, I talked about this recently because I was like uh, making a suggestion to, um, oh, what's his butt? Uh, JT, is that his name? The record room guy? Um, I did his, um, his contest for um, his thousand subscriber mark. He hit the thousand subscriber mark it was pretty cool so but my guilty pleasure on that little contest vid i did for him i featured the album key that i have on vinyl by um Kitaro, and i talked about this i couldn't remember the name of it and i called it like the the tea trail or some shit but yeah Kitaro's silk road uh epic one and two uh is on here so this is really fantastic this is like late 70s Kitaro, where it, it was kind of like there was lots of cool elements of like prog, like prog rock and synthesizer. You know, it wasn't so kind of just like outlandish and elaborate as his like mid late 80s stuff. Uh, more kind of just like, I don't know. Really cool shit. I love Katara. Um, I don't know anything about Herman's Hermits. Um, I've heard of, of course, the name a million times. And uh, I know that there's, you know, the tunes out there that have been on the radio since I was a child that I'll recognize, but yeah, I'm not going to turn this down. Tapes are still five for a dollar. So you can find five tapes. You're stoked. And finding these <laughs> in a dollar bin was really fucking exciting. Really, really cool. Original soundtrack to The Empire Strikes Back, 1982. Um, yeah, and this is one of those that like it has in the thing it says if you... Uh, for a limited time, you can get this special offer where you can, like, mail this little insert in and you get, like, a big old, you know, book about the music and pictures and, like, all kinds of shit. I wish it was 1982 again. I would mail this off and get my little souvenir book uh, <laughs> for the music from the film Empire Strikes Back. Fucking badass, dude. <laughs> That's really cool. It's got everything on there. The entire film's music. And of course, they also had Return of the Jedi. And now it's mine. Ah! That original poster art, really effing cool. Yeah, same thing. It's got that little thing like, send this away to get the little booklet. That was really, <laughs> really makes me happy to get, to find this kind of stuff. I love it. Uh, you guys are going to laugh at me, but you know, when I find this kind of stuff too, I buy it. You know, original VHS, but this is. Uh, important to me because it's the original, original version without all of the added uh, ridiculous um, extra, you know, scene footage and, and, you know, CGI and goofy characters and whatever stupid inserts that they injected into the films. Remember that? Like in the late 90s, they did that right before they released The Phantom Menace. So it was like, must have been 98 or 99. Um, and it was, you're hard pressed now all that's on TV or like, you know, on Disney plus and whatever else you can only get the newly revised versions and you can't see the original films, the way the theatrical releases. Um, and so, yeah, when you find like a CBS Fox red label in perfect condition and it's got all three films with this really, really cool box. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> They're all there. Excellent shape. The original poster art and everything. So, yeah, it's not like rare. It's not worth a ton of money or anything, but I like being able to watch the true original theatrical release. Not a bunch of ridiculous horse shit added to it. It's, I hated that. Oh, I hated that so much. It still makes my butt itch to this day. All of that, that whole era, the episodes one, two, and three. 
<laughs> it's such horrible, such horrible dog shit. All these new ones are pretty rad though. All right, um, again, in the same bait. Sorry, guys, this is, has nothing to do with records. I'm sorry, but hey, we're talking about, this is a music channel, and we're kind of talking about collect collectibles, you know, in a sense. Um, so I'm allowed to bring out these types of collectibles, um, especially when you get the entire, uh, first the first four original Star Trek movies, all back to back, and the very first movie is unfucking opened <laughs> ah, wicked cool so i have um one two three and four star trek one two three four now and i pulled off a fifth one and got the um this is the original pilot episode for the original uh television show star trek the first ever the pilot episode it's called the cage wicked cool so I'm gonna get my nerd on this weekend, hard, real hard. I'm gonna watch all the Star Trek movies, the first four of them, and I'm gonna watch the original trilogy of Star Wars too. Stoked about that stuff. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me again tonight, guys. Uh, go say what's up on Instagram. I'm Square the Circle Records on Instagram. Um, say hi, give me some hearts. Uh, we can chit chat on there and talk about music and um, yeah. Let's keep doing this. I got some LPs, guys. A lot of really neat ones. This one, I've never seen this. Um, beautiful cover art. Um, I like soundtracks. This has, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, like a bunch of jazz and kind of like old-timey type stuff. But um, yeah, just looks really interesting. Uh, music for the film The Victors. Really stark, beautiful photography and color and... Just never, I've never seen this label, Colpix, Colpix Records. I'm sure maybe it's like a little subsidiary offshoot of like the Colgate uh, thing. Wasn't Colgate, you know, making albums for everybody and, you know, Colpix, all their, you know, picture soundtracks makes sense to me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'll give it a shot. Uh, Frank Sinatra sings a couple cuts on here. Um, it's just in really magnificent shape. I just, you know, when I see stuff in bargain bins that I've never seen before, I've been digging fucking through, <laughs> through bargain bins, guys, like my whole life. Even when I was a kid and I didn't even really, well, I didn't even have a record player. I used to buy records because I'd hang them on my wall. And you know, I'm talking, it's like the early 90s when I was just a kid and I was like sifting through junk stores and you could still get records 10 for a dollar. You pick stuff up that's immaculate, you know? If you've never seen it before, <laughs> in all your days of digging, who knows? I might be pleasantly surprised. I might really, really, really like it. So there's that one. The Victors. I'm assuming probably like mid-50s, early 50s. I don't know. Maybe even later. I bought a Tom Jones record because I think Tom Jones is the shit. Look at that handsome devil. Good looking young man. What's it called? Green, green grass of home. Tom Jones. Also probably what, like early 60s? On that parrot label. Pretty cool. I love that parrot label. Yeah, I'm gonna take a take a guess. That's probably like 1961, right? Who knows? I'll get some enjoyment out of that. That sounds awesome. Nice thick wax. Uh, this is just another fun one too. Just, you know, like I said, if it's clean as a whistle, I really love this photo <laughs> on the cover. Um, and what I know about Chet Atkins is very little. Um, I'm assuming, you know, obviously country stylings, maybe honky tonk, maybe a few other kind of like, you know, interesting interjections into the country stylings, maybe jazz, who knows. But yeah, I'll check out some Chet Atkins and just a really fantastic picture on the front that's like a big hollow body like a gibson isn't it i don't know i don't know a lot about guitars but i just love that cool up close and personal shot of his you know guitar in his hands and that's it it's just got the funny font right here you know hum and strum with old chet atkins let's go boys and girls have some lemonade sit down and have a bologna sandwich and we're gonna sing some songs tonight i don't know we'll see what it's all about i'm sure it's fucking fantastic seen this around a whole bunch and never owned it uh yeah 
I don't know. I hear everything I hear about these guys, people talk about Jay Giles and um, they talk really, you know, a lot of great things about it. So I'm going to check it out. Don't know anything about it. It's a live album. What's it called? Full House. Full House by the Jay Giles Band off Atlantic Records, 1972. Just cool looking dudes. Yeah. I've been getting familiarized, guys. I'm working on it. <laughs> 90s kid. Don't know anything about this shit. Pretty cool. I love Chris Christofferson. And I read about him being all hooked up with this gal, and she's pretty great too. Um, and I've never seen or had their um, their duet album that they did. But yeah, Rita Coolidge and Chris Christofferson called Breakaway. And uh, what a handsome couple they were. I, I love the shit out of Chris Christofferson. Some of my very favorite um, country, Americana, you know, folk stylings. Uh, love the shit out of him. So I'm really stoked to listen to their... Uh, their duet album. Um, here's an interesting one. Don't know anything about it. I've promised myself and promised you guys that I was going to start, you know, like I said, kind of like reach out, try new things, you know, and uh, really wanting to kind of like take big, broad steps into the world of like, you know, blues and uh, soul music and all kinds of that stuff. That I really, you know, don't R&B, Motown, you know, all that stuff. I don't know anything about it. And so I've been checking it out. And a lot of it's really fucking fantastic. I'm sure this is probably more along the lines of kind of like, you know, uh, beginning beginning of the disco phase. Maxi is her name. Um, so yeah, I'll check it out. It's on Blue Note. So who knows? Maybe it's more jazzy than anything. Um, but I don't know. From this gal, I'm getting kind of like... I'm getting kind of disco-y vibes. We'll see. What was this, like 1977? It's hella gonna be hella disco. <laughs> but I'm sure it's dope. And even if I don't really like it very much, I know I can sell it to Ian. <laughs> Ian listens to disco. That's hilarious. Love you, Ian. House of Records. Love you, buddy. Um, fucking... I know every time I come across a Hollow Notes album, I fucking buy it. And this is like, this is the huge one. Big Bang Bam, is that, isn't that what it's called? Big Bam Boom, yeah. Um, huge album for them. What's on here? <laughs> so, isn't the um, the DuckTales soundtrack on here? It's got to have the, uh, the DuckTales soundtrack. I don't remember. I don't remember the names of all their songs. <laughs> Oh, it's even got the original inner. I didn't realize that. Cool. Original inner. I love this, like, super 80s style <laughs> art. <laughs> Shit was everywhere when I was a kid. This, another one I have never seen before. And I'm just like, yeah. I don't know anything about the label off the uh, Music Core, Music Core label. I don't know. Gene Pitney. All, seemingly all originals, I think. No. No, there's, there, he's, he's playing a lot of cover songs on here, but I'm sure it's just, you know, it's probably um, kind of country-inspired rock and roll of the, er, looks to be early, early 60s, early to mid-60s. I don't know. I've just never seen this, and it looks fucking cool. It was clean. Music or yeah, exciting fun. Can't wait to listen to it. Okay, boys and girls. Getting down to the last little bit here. Um, these were not thrift store finds. Kind of cheating going against the name of my episode here. But um, it's also stuff that I just kind of want to highlight and show you guys that I got uh, just throughout the week, kind of everywhere. And I got these from the record store. So yeah, they're used. I didn't get them from the thrift store though. Um, so I had to pay a little bit more than, you know, a few bucks a piece, but, um, I've been trying to get all their albums, uh, because I've only ever listened to Scheherazade 
and ashes are burning. Um, and I heard a bunch of other stuff from that point in their career, like 72 to 76. Um, I love it all. And I just had never had this album. So I, I think I paid $5 for it. I think it was five bucks. It's super incredible deal. Turn of the Cards. Finally, I have a, turn, a copy of Turn of the Cards by Renaissance. 1975, right? Four. Sorry, 1974. So it was like, um, Ashes Are Burning, then Scheherazade, then this one, I think, right? And then maybe there was another one before they did that live at Carnegie Hall, um, which is also fucking dope. Just like five albums in a row. They even had more. They had more in like in the 60s too. These guys are fucking incredible. Incredibly underrated. Um, wonderful singer, wonderful songwriting, you know, just insanely fucking classic, awesome symphonic rock, prog rock. <laughs> now I have a really super awesome clean copy of it. Uh, thanks to House of Records for five dollars. Um, again, this is thanks to the House of Records in Eugene, Oregon on 13th Avenue. Love you guys. Um, I've had millions of copies of this and I don't know why I, you know, sometimes I sell it at record shows and stuff like that, but I ended up I go through the collection and I thought you think you have it and you're like, fuck me, I don't have it right now. <laughs> I've had three or four copies of it. And so I made sure I saw it in the bins and um, got a great price on this. It's like $3, maybe three or $4. And it's super, super duper duper clean. Um, got another copy of Tarkus again. Um, magnificent Progressive Rock, 1972, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Um, and yeah, just a really, really nice, I'd say very good plus to almost excellent copy. Like there's nothing splitting. I mean, it's starting to kind of like getting beat up at there a little, but it's still really solid spine. I love this fantastic art. I, I still think their first album, their eponymous release in 1970, uh, I, I think that is still my favorite album by them. But um, this one just went off the fucking, <laughs> off the deep end. Love it to death. The opening track alone just sells the album. This is the, the entire first side, isn't it? I don't know. I can't, dude. I need fucking glasses. <laughs> yeah. Can't see anything anymore. Yeah, so stoked to get that for a couple dollars. And I showed this off already um, because I did kind of a little stitch and bitch episode a few days ago about the woes of being a record collector and how... There's, you know, you got to take a lot of shit with a lot of the good parts of it, too. Um, and I finally got a copy in the mail after seven months. I ordered this in November, like the first week of November last year. And this was my favorite, my number one favorite album of 2021. And it just came in the mail like three days ago. <laughs> it's the, finally the album uh, from the band Jin called Meandering Soul. Uh, this was my favorite release of last year. It just came out late in the year, in early, in, in early November, and just, it fucking floored me. I love everything about this. These guys are French. They have a woman that sings and screams, these guttural fucking, you know, like just crazy witch metal shit, and she plays the electric harp as well. They like paint their faces, and they go out in the, in the woods and do all kind of witchy shit, and it's so wonderful. She's like topless, and her face is all painted, and it's fucking so awesome. French, you know, witchy people. <laughs> it's excellent metal. Uh, it's got lots of like, you know, 60s psych tinges and lots of even progressive 70s elements to it. But mostly it's just kind of like real hard, heavy kind of doom stoner rock. Um, fucking incredible. But um, really happy to finally get this. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> it got some insane water damage. I've even had this thing sitting out. Uh, in the open air, kind of spread apart and wanting to get some, some air flowing through it. So, you know, we don't want to grow any mold. Um, but yeah, the water damage was immense, uh, unfortunately. But it's in, you know, still in pretty good shape. Um, beautiful art. Beautiful insert. But yeah, like I said, not just the water damage to the, uh, the jacket. So I can understand that sitting in like maybe a wet car sitting out somewhere and I don't know shit happens but to add insult to injury it also was sitting in some place that was far too warm for a long time and it was just warped beyond belief you can't really see it 
Uh, but if I were to put it on my platter and spin it for you guys, yeah, you can kind of see. It's just, <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, it's all monkey dicked up. God damn it. So fucking mad. This shit cost me like $65 to get sent from France. Um, I don't know. It's still dope. You can hear like nasty kind of like warbles in and out of pitch. Uh, even though my, you know, my tone arm is, it's pretty solid and heavy duty and it's got the right uh, curvature as far as like the angular, what do they, the azimuth and, and all that, whatever. Um, it doesn't like cause too much distortion and the angular shape of it kind of keeps the tracking pretty well aligned, even if something has a pretty serious warp. Uh, it's pretty heavy. My stylus, um, excuse me, like the entire cartridge, it's a Nagaoka cartridge, and the cartridge is actually pretty weighty, and I keep my, you know, anti-skate uh, quite a bit higher as far as, like, the actual uh, leverage, I guess, whatever whatever that is, just the the, the tension on the, the, the down weight. <laughs> I don't know of the, uh, I know there's a term for it, but I'm fucking forgetting it right now, but um, I keep that um, at, like, a pretty solid, like, with my anti-skate both at, like, a two, um, tracking force, sorry, yeah, the tracking force is, like, maybe even 2.2, um, and so it's, like, it, it, my point is, it's just, it's kind of, it's heavier, it's sitting down in the grooves with some pressure, I like that, it gives me a better even keel on things, and even if records are mildly warped and wobbly, it can still, like, you don't get a lot of, like, variance in the pitch and everything like that, um, I guess I need to listen better with this record. I'm probably still going to send it back. I don't know. I feel fucking bad. They're one of my favorite new bands. <laughs> this fucking gorgeous insert that came with them. The, the, you know, the insert's not damaged at all. You know? Kind of crazy. <laughs> but the record's totally fucking foobard. <laughs> the jacket's all moldy. But yeah, fucking really great. Really cool. Beautiful art. I'll have to look into and see who does their art. Maybe it's, it's somebody in the band. Yeah, these dudes are from uh, Bordeaux, Bordeaux, France. Gin. Fucking cool band. Check them out, everybody. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, that's all my stuff, guys. Thanks for hanging out and talking about music with me. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful uh, rest of your week. And uh, stay dry. You know, change your socks. And uh, brush your teeth. And, uh, yeah, peace be with you.